Good morning. Welcome to our Holy Cross parishioners and a special welcome to all who are visiting. We are pleased to have you join us in our Eucharistic celebration today as we celebrate God's presence in our lives on this, the second Sunday of Lent, and happy St. Patrick's Day to all. Our readings today begin on page 1032 in the Red Worship Book. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Reef. Please join in the entrance hymn number 467, The Glory of These Forty Days. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And so we have the second Sunday of Lent in our liturgical life and our devotional life gives us the wonderful feast of St. Patrick. So as we offer greetings to one another, we include that happy St. Patrick's Day as we now embark upon our own examine of hearts examination of our hearts as we take a moment to repent of sin and ask God's forgiveness and mercy. commanded us to listen to your beloved Son. Be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, so that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, 
who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all of these, split them in two, and placed them each half opposite the other, but the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking firepot and a flaming torch, which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in the responsorial psalm found on page 42 in the red hymnal. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light. from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those whose conduct, who conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform it with his glorified body, by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. 
Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him Moses and Elijah. They appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions, John and James, had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we be here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know whether we think of it a lot or once in a while or whatever, but in recent years, for some time now, there's been quite a motion in the direction of Old Testament names for people. Somehow or other, you don't hear as many of the traditional saints' names, although that's often given in baptism as the middle name. But we do hear of people in the Old Testament times. Quite a few uh, baby boys are now named Zachary and so forth, Josh and like that. And... um, I'm thinking right now, even though I never met anybody named Moses, I do know someone named Elijah, and he's right here with us today. And so it's great to think that these names are being revived. And speaking of revival, we're not here for a tent meeting that would, the kind of which were being held in the early 1800s where people would hear very marvelous speakers and those speakers would 
be literally set up in a tent that would come to town for the revival meetings. And great fervor and excitement came around as people were told by Protestants, get with it, come to the Lord, and so forth. Now, in our Catholic tradition, we have something like this when we have a parish mission. In the old days, just think of this. In the old days, there'd be two full weeks. The first week for the men and boys. The second week for the women and girls. Every single night of the week. With as many daily masses sprinkled in there as possible. There wouldn't be just one priest that would come, but two would come so that one would be featured one evening, another, another, and so forth. Now, what does this have to do with the Feast of the Transfiguration? Nothing. <laughs> However, we can learn from this. The Transfiguration this is an opportunity for us. This is not the Feast of the Transfiguration. Put your thinking caps on and come to your thoughts about when the, that feast is. It's not a movable feast like Easter, but it's the same day and month every single year. Not at a time like uh, late winter, early spring that we're experiencing now, but anyway. Today's gospel, of course, screams of transfiguration. And to help people who might be uh, preparing for college through their high school, if they are inclined towards science, chemistry, physics, biology, they are a must. But then in the field of languages, not such an absolute must, but almost a must, would be a, a knowledge of some of the ancient languages, like Greek and Latin, that have about them the same, almost the same number of names and words that doctors must know, scientists must know and public health people must know. And so guidance counselors will tell our high schoolers, if possible, if you're pursuing a career in medicine or whatever, try to include either Greek or Latin in there. What does this have to do with the transfiguration? Nothing, but it has to do in an indirect way about. Speaking of the ancient languages, the word trans, T-R-A-N-S, or if you wanted to put the Rochester A in it, you could say trans, but trans, trans, means across. Transatlantic, across the Atlantic. Transworld airlines, across the whole world. Anything with trans in it is big and awesome and wonderful. And so we have a feast called Transfiguration, where the ordinary appearance of Jesus as an ordinary Jewish man of his time, for a few seconds maybe, or a whole minute, when Peter, James, and John were accompanying him, and when he allowed them to have, when God the Father allowed them to have a vision of Jesus and Moses and Elijah together, that's what took place on what we now call the Feast of the Transfiguration and the date, if any kind, if you remembered or ever knew, it's August the 6th. And at the earlier Mass, when I finished with that, Father Gagne picked up the theme and mentioned that in a certain year, 1978, August 6th was the death of a pope who had been in office a very long time, 15 years, Pope Paul VI. 
and that triggered another papal election in which a man was elected pope who lived only one month, St. John Paul I, or rather John Paul I, he's not been acclaimed yet as a saint, he may be someday. But then when the famous John Paul II came along, he picked up on the name that his predecessor had been able to use for only that one month in September 1978. So, lots can happen on a certain day. Many awesome and beautiful and wonderful things can happen to people any day, any time, any year. But what God the Father wanted on the occasion when Jesus and Moses and Elijah appeared for a short, precious time. What God the Father wanted was an occasion in which he could say, just like he did at Jesus' baptism, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And that's exactly what he did. So it's also true, and one of the consultors that I usually look toward, a father uh, Michael uh, Simeone, Simone, a Jesuit father from Boston College who teaches theology and ministry, has something else to say. He says, if the transfiguration requires anything of our discipleship, it is to let go of our mask and let others catch a glimpse of God in us. Can people look at any of us and say, that remain. It's like something God would do or say or whatever. Every one of Jesus' followers should be able to claim that, even though they wouldn't, they'd be too humble to claim, uh, to claim glory for themselves. But any one of Jesus' followers should have as an ideal that we find Jesus in each other. So. Suffice it to say that that's the important thing. Back to our words as we conclude these few thoughts here this morning. Transmitter, transformer, and now today in the spiritual realm, transfiguration. Imagine a world in which people who are driving all the time didn't know anything about transmission. Words carry so many different thoughts and they conjure up so many ideas that it's absolutely wonderful. And often we think of science as kind of in an opposite camp from religion. It's not. It's not in an opposite camp. Science and religion, when understood properly, go hand in hand with one particular word that we're all interested in, whether we are scientists or clergy or disciples of a parish called Holy Cross, there's one word that we should all be interested in and pursue with all our hearts, and it encompasses science and religion and many other things. And that word is truth. God's truth cannot be divided. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So chemists, physicists, psychologists, people of religion, people of God, that's all of us in some way or another. And the two ideas of science and religion do not contradict each other. Please stand. As people of we have a very, very awesome charter 
of the Articles of Faith called the Nicene Creed. And we ask that you join in the recitation of that Nicene Creed today. What do we believe? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. So regardless now of whatever profession or trade or it is that we may follow, we remember always that we are children of God, sons and daughters of the Eternal Father, and as such we now offer our prayers of petition to an all-loving Father. For all who lead the Church, that they may be transformed by the vision of Christ and help all of us to deepen our faith and grow in love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world and for an end to violence and hate, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may follow the example of St. Joseph to hear and heed God's word for us and that we may have the courage and wisdom of St. Patrick, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our candidates and catechumen, that they may experience the transforming power of God's love and grow in their desire to love and serve God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that God will touch their bodies and spirits with tenderness and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may behold God face to face, especially Dolores Roth, John Sinelli, and Eileen Medley, Sister Kathy O'Connell's sister, and for Sylvia Singer, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us listen to the voice of God's Son as we remember our own private petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, on this great feast of St. Patrick, coinciding as it does with the second Sunday of Lent this year, we wish a happy feast day to all gentlemen named Patrick and to all ladies named Patricia. And we ask that through the intercession of the saints, they and we will rejoice in your presence forever in heaven, through Christ our Lord. The second collection today is the Energy Collection. Please join in the offertory hymn, number 585, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Oh, 
Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested 
to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. <clears throat> Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> The mystery of faith. <clears throat> when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you <clears throat> so, that <we> may <clears throat> so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, <clears throat> especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with St. Patrick, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Grimwald, Santa Maria, on whose constant intercession in your presence <clears throat> we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and Matthew, our Bishop Emeritus, all the clergy and religious and the entire people you have gained for your own. <clears throat> Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. <clears throat> to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. <clears throat> there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. <clears throat> Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Would any minister of communion planning to take Holy Communion to a sick or shut-in person please come up to the sanctuary? <clears throat> Our annual St. Joseph's Table will be today from 1 till 3 p.m. in the Parish Center. All are welcome. Seniors and Friends will be held on Thursday, March 21st from 1.30 till 3. Come and listen to Irish music of the Dulcimer Strummers. Please mark your calendar with some upcoming events. The annual Soup Supper, sponsored by our teens, will be Friday, March 29th from 5 to 7.30 followed by Stations of the Cross. It's not too late to purchase your celebration of the green raffle tickets or the 80s prom tickets. Help support our school. The Eastern Greece Charlotte Lenten Retreat will be March 31st, April 1st, and 2nd. Father Bob Kennedy will be our retreat leader talking about reconciliation. Our annual Day of Goodness will be on Saturday, April 6th. The dinner that evening will be at 6 o'clock at St. John's on the Ridge. Please contact John, Donna Jacoby. Please see the bulletin or website for full details on all events happening in our parish community, and be sure to like us on Facebook. There will be no coffee hour after Mass today, but please come back and join us for the St. Joseph's Table at 1 o'clock. And our recessional hymn will be number 881, How Good Lord to Be Here. Let us, let us pray. <clears throat> Bless your faithful people, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to Moses and Elijah and to those three apostles. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and proclaim the gospel. Thanks be to God. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>